Father God, I just pray over this word today. I pray, Lord God, that you would bless this word at the hearing of our ears. We thank you, Lord God, for everything that you're doing in our midst. We thank you, Lord God, for impartation, for revelation. We thank you for taking us into a new dimension, into a new level in you. We thank you for activating our gifts. We thank you for developing our gifts. We thank you for giving us vision, dreams, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for giving us understanding and wisdom in Jesus Almighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. And so we're going to be in James chapter 1. And I, I, I got together a campaign last uh, yesterday. Yesterday in the afternoon, I came in from a wedding out there. In Willoughby and the Lord spoke to me he said Michael put together a campaign I want you to bring the gifts together so many of you guys have come praise the Lord for you being here as well and the Lord has a word and if you're here I believe the Lord has a word directly for you if you're watching online I believe that this word is for you but the Lord's been speaking to me for the last month about something he's talking about concerning closing the gap Closing the gap. Somebody say closing the gap. Closing the gap. Praise the Lord. I believe that you're going to be blessed today. So stay with me. Those of you on YouTube, those of you on Facebook, stay with me as we get into the word. We're talking about closing the gap. So I put the campaign out yesterday. It's almost like a pop-up prophetic word. Um, usually we don't do this. You guys know how I flow. I just come up here and we pull from the open heaven. And I like to teach like that. And we're still going to do that. But when we have days like this where um, God has something very specific he wants to say. And I believe when he does that, it's very key to unlocking something in you. It's strategic. Praise the Lord. So we like to flow organically in the prophetic as a ministry because we want to stay open for that fresh manna to come. Um, but I feel like there's something specific that God wants to say to you. So he's prepared this word for you and um, he wants this to speak directly to your circumstance directly to your situation and he wants to set you free from something today praise the Lord so James chapter 1 and I'm gonna read this from verse 2 all the way through I want you guys to hear me and um, actually you know what I'm if um, Elder Lane, if you have it or um, if someone has it in their phone already, if you could read it in the mic for me, starting at verse 2, and then I'll tell you where to stop. Praise the Lord. Amen. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but that patience have her perfect work. That ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give him to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low. Because, all, because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass. And the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth 
he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived it, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brother. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Amen. You can stop. There. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for that. Elder Lane. Somebody say Father of lights. Okay, so that word father, word father there. He's the father of lights. I really want us to talk about mothering and fathering in the spirit. Really fathering in the spirit because God does not sing gender like that spiritually. A mother is a father. But so that we understand it, you know, we call it a mother. So my spiritual father here in Cleveland is mother, known as Mother McCurry. Really, she's a father, a father in the spirit. Okay, so God wants to take your gift somewhere. How many are seers in the house? Those of you watching online, dreamers, intercessors, right? You have a gift. I can remember early on, before I even was in ministry, before I even got into the word like that, I would be at the grocery store wondering why I could see people's names before they walked in my line. I thought I was losing my mind. I knew their name before they came up. I saw their name in the in the spirit. I know I didn't know it was in the spirit, but I saw like a sheet come down in front of my eyes, and I saw their name. So I went home and I, mom, uh, something's happening with me. I know people's names before I meet them. She laughed in all your imagination, but that was really happening. So I had a gift. How many have had some encounters like that where? You see stuff before it happens. Come on. You hear stuff. Come on. And it's that prophetic gift. And the unusual surrounds that prophetic gift. A lot of people think you might be crazy because, you know, you see demons, you see angels, you perceive stuff, you feel stuff that other people don't feel. But God has gifted you. He's made you a gift. So he wants you to learn about what you carry. And he wants you to be effective. Somebody say skilled. skilled. Hallelujah. He wants you to be skilled in your gift. You can have a gift and then not be effective. So just realizing and learning that you have a gift is one thing. But learning how to operate in that gift is another thing. And then becoming skilled in that gift is another thing. As I learned I had a gift. I struggled in learning I had a gift because I just thought something was off with me. You know, um, if, if I went a little bit longer without understanding, I might have ended up in the crazy house because people around me didn't understand me, let alone me not understanding myself. And uh, the Lord showed me once once he showed me uh, that there are a lot of prophetic gifts that are locked up in a mental hospital. And these people, they're really experiencing things in the spirit, real things. They're seeing things that they know not of, but there's not someone around to help them understand who they are. The first thing you got to understand is that you are somebody in Christ or you're destined to be. If you're not saved, you're destined to be somebody in Christ. So you can be outside of Christ and that gift is still working. And so some people just need understanding. They need guidance. It would save them. So that's why God is building breakout. Because there is a multitude of gifts in this region that are going to need to land and find a place to get understanding. Some of them will be saved from ending up in a mental hospital. Some of them might be saved from losing their mind because the world will tell you something's wrong with you. But in the kingdom's eyes, something's very right with you. More right with you 
than with the world around you. You see a truth that other people don't see. The world call you crazy. You're losing your mind. Praise the Lord. The devil's a liar. The devil is a liar. So God wants to create a place for people to get understanding. Boy, we're so far from understanding and truth, the type of truth that God wants to give us. And Wednesday, I talked about the spirit of truth. We talked about four different forms of God's voice that can come to you. One form is the voice of love. The other form is the voice of grace. Then there's the voice of wisdom and the voice of truth. Those are four different levels. Now, those aren't the exclusive forms of God's voice, but those are four forms of God's voice that we can look at to help us understand how God speaks on different levels. The Bible says God so what? The world. Loved the world. Hallelujah. So when God ministers to the world, what voice does he use? When he ministers to the world. When he ministers to the world, he uses love. Because the Bible says God so loved the world. Sometimes the church comes in and they try to condemn. The Bible doesn't say God so condemned the world. No. He so loved. When he comes to the world, he comes with love. So that voice is way is it's a lot more open it's a lot more outstretched because he's 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 embracing everyone and the goal is not uh when his voice of love is coming it's not to fix you come on his voice of love is coming to get you it's coming to receive you it's coming to catch you so a lot of the world needs to hear what? His voice of love. So the world is not, some of the world is not yet ready for his voice of truth. Come on. It's not ready for his voice of truth. So we got to be understanding of the different levels. We need wisdom. So the, the, one, of the, 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 one of the things that a lot of believers struggle with is they see the things of God very simple when there's levels there's different places there's different things that god wants to do with you so then there's the voice of god's grace the voice of grace comes to the believer the voice of grace isn't for the world like that we already said the voice for the world is his voice of love his voice of grace comes to the believer you receive jesus now his grace meets you Right where you are. Fills in the gaps. It's making up where you lack. Where you're weak, he's strong. That's his grace. So his grace comes to you. And it's still, it's still not a condemning voice. The Bible says, therefore, there is now no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. God is not condemning you. He's looking to lead you. So his voice of grace comes and meets you right where you are. Then there's his voice of wisdom. His voice of wisdom still is not condemning you. He's not trying to prove you wrong. Come on. That's the opposite. He's trying to show you right. Come on. He's not trying to prove you wrong. He's trying to show you right. The spirit of God comes to show you the right path. Uh, there's two different ways that uh, you can see things. You can uh, be looking at someone hanging off of a cliff. And they're hanging by one arm. They got about two fingers left before they fall. And you can stand before them and you can say, you're going to fall. You're going to fall. You're going to fall. Hurry up. You're going to fall. There's there's. Uh, there is uh, rushing waters underneath you and sharp rocks. You're going to fall. How many ever had somebody in their life like that? Now, the voice of God comes in and says, give me your hands. You're not going to fall. You're going to make it. Give me your hands. You can do it. You can do it. Give me your hands. You're not going to fall. You're not going to fall. You're not going to fall. You've got this. You can do it. Give me your hand. Praise the Lord. 
two different types of voices trying to have the same result. I've had people in my life who said, you're going to fall, you're going to fall, you're going to fall. I couldn't listen to those voices. So his wisdom comes in and it shows you what to do, what not to do. It gives you wisdom. And then that truth comes in. Praise the Lord. That truth comes in. The world can't handle the voice of truth. But as the church, we're supposed to be able to handle the voice of truth. But we're living in a day and an age where not even the church is receiving the voice of truth. The voice of truth is the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he's the spirit of truth. You can't separate the two. You can't separate the Holy Spirit and truth. They're one. So if you have the Holy Spirit, you have the voice of truth. If you reject the truth, come on, you're rejecting the very Holy Spirit. Take a look at the American church today. There's a lot of rejecting of the Spirit of God because of truth that is rejected. Now, the world rejects the Spirit of truth, and it shouldn't be a shock because that's what's expected from the world. But it should be a shock when the church rejects the Spirit of truth. How do you minister to homosexuals or um, transgenders? Come on, I'm trying to help somebody. The voice of love. Come on. Some of them aren't ready for the truth like that. So that's why God comes in love. Praise the Lord. You can't catch, you can't clean a fish before you catch it. Come on. Can you clean a fish before you can't clean a fish? You got to catch the fish first. And you got to clean it. And then you can't eat it till you clean. Come on. So there's a process. The voice of love. That's why you got to be led by the Holy Spirit. You got to know how to, how to minister to people on those different levels. Praise the Lord. So the voice of truth comes to the believer. And not just any believer, but uh, a lot of times it's a more mature believer that can handle the voice of truth. Because the voice of truth comes in. And um, how many know the truth isn't always pleasant? Come on. I think the first thing the voice of truth reveals to you is the stuff that's kind of wrong, the stuff that needs to be fixed, the uh, stuff that you didn't know was there. And uh, it also reveals the world around you. You might see some stuff about some people around you, the truth about the ugly truth about some people around you. You might see the ugly truth about the culture that's around you. I remember watching those videos about the truth of, about hip hop or the truth about rock and roll. Come on. I had a hard time because I had to throw some CDs away. Oh, my goodness. He put what in the music? Are you serious? How many know on those levels of influence? There's always a compromise. I don't care who you are. No person can go to the next level in their gift without a form of submission. Either you're going to submit to one place or the other. I don't care who you are. For a certain level of influence, millions and thousands of people being influenced by you, there's a price to pay. There's a, there's a level of submission because you can't operate out of yourself. The person who thinks they're operating out of themselves is deceived. It's funny because even these celebrities know that their gift isn't coming from them. So they got all these aliases and these other names. Sasha Fierce. Come on. There's truth there. She knows when she gets up and she's influencing on that level. She knows what's coming from her is not her. There's truth there. So those levels are some dangerous places. So the voice of truth will reveal to you the truth of the world around you. It'll give you that. It'll expose to you the enemy's attacks. It'll expose to you what's really happening behind the scenes. 
It'll expose to you what's really going on with your bloodline. It'll expose to you those things that are really hang are really are a hang up for you. When the voice of truth comes. Praise the Lord. So God wants us to know who we are in Christ. The voice of truth will reveal that to you as well. That's one of the pleasant things. The voice of truth will come to you and tell you who you really are. Tell you what God really has for you. Reveal to you what's really in store. Reveal to you the blessing and the inheritance that you have. It'll reveal to you the gifts that you carry. It'll reveal to you the destiny that's in you that's waiting to come forth. Come on. The voice of truth will reveal that side of you as well. So that you know who you are in Christ. Praise the Lord. So it's important that we connect with the right places in order to get understanding about our gift. Hallelujah. So the father of lights that we saw in the book of James, the father of lights. So what really is a father? When the Bible refers to father. It's really saying source. Somebody say father. father. Somebody say source. source. Father. father. Source. source. So the Bible is calling God the source of light. Somebody say God is the source of light. God is the source of light. And uh, how many know truth is light? So God is the source of what? The source of truth. He's the source of light. Praise the Lord. So the light is the truth and the truth is the light. Trust me. Trust me. I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. Hallelujah. And those of you online, God bless you. So when you have a spiritual father, okay, uh, that person, that person that God has set is a source. He's a father. He's a source. She's a She's a father spiritually. She's a source. You see how it's not gender specific. Father means source. Source of what? Source of anointing. Somebody say source of anointing. All right. The Lord's going to have to help me because um, people understand this stuff in some other nations of the world, but we have a hard time getting it here in America. Which is why we don't experience revival on some of those levels. But God is trying to bring the revelation here. He's trying to bring the revelation here. There's a stronghold trying to keep us from the truth about ministry. From the truth about the things of God. And God wants to expose them to us. So... There's nothing that God can't do unless he reveals it to his prophets. Okay. There's nothing that God can give you without a person. There's nothing that God can't get to somebody without you. So it's important that you get in position. It's important that you get in place because until you get in place, someone else can't get in place and so on and so forth. Two years ago, God showed me the vision. I saw the gears of a clock. I said, what is that? He said, each gear has a specific position, a specific place. When one gear is missing, all the gears fail to operate. So the arms on the clock never turn. I said, well, what is that? The Lord said, that's revival. That's revival over the city. Because revival is here. But until it can be released on that level, God is getting things in place. He's getting the gears in position so that the, the wheels can begin to turn. So he's trying to get us in position. He's trying to get us in place. So we are in need of more fathers. Come on. We're in need of more fathers. Fathers. So God is trying to get us in position. To receive what he wants to release to us. Praise the Lord. So the Bible calls him the father of lights. Praise the Lord. Let's go into the next scripture. Let's go into Genesis 1, 16. 
Genesis 1, in Genesis 1, and I'm going to be reading at verse 16. Hold your place in James because we'll come back to this. Let me know when you guys are there. Somebody in the on the uh, live feed, please put the scripture in the comments for me if you can. Genesis chapter one. Hallelujah. And it says here, verse 16. And it says here, and God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light. To rule the night, he made the stars also. I needed you guys to see that. Let's go quickly to Second Peter one nineteen. I just want to build your faith today. Let me know when you guys are there. Second Peter. Second Peter 1.19. Hallelujah. And it says here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Closing the gap. We thank you, Lord God, for closing the gap today. Hallelujah. Zikoronamadiya. Thank you, Jesus. Second Peter. Second Peter one. And it says here, verse 19, we also have a more sure word of prophecy whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth. In a dark place, and it says, until the day dawn, and the day star, which is Christ, and the day star arise in your hearts. I'm going to read that again. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, wherein ye do well that you take heed as unto the light that shineth in a dark place. Until the day dawn and the day star, or until Christ arise in your heart. Somebody say, Christ is rising in me. Christ Praise the Lord. We're closing the gap. We're closing the gap. Hallelujah. Let's jump back to James. And in the psalm, it says, until the perfect light of day. One of the psalms says, until the perfect light. Light of day. It's speaking of a place of light in you. And the scripture, it also says, let thine eye be pure so that thy whole body be full of what? Full of light. Hallelujah. Some years ago, I wrote a book called Be Full of Light. God is interested in you being full of light. Praise the Lord. Let's go to James. I'm building your faith. We're back in James chapter 1. And I'm going to read this again to you guys. It says, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good and perfect gift is from above. In other words, every good gift comes from God. And cometh down from the father of lights, the source of light, watch this, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Praise the Lord. So the Bible in the scripture in Genesis talks about the, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. So it's talking about God in eternity and then God 
in time. All right. So the revelation is a, a, a if you would understand that we have shadows. We have shadows in our life. Uh, places of darkness where there lacks understanding. Some areas where we lack um, breakthrough. There's those seasons of temptation that come around in our life. Come on. So how many know your life goes in a cycle? Life is built on cycles. Praise the Lord. Years ago, um, God showed me in a vision. And I began to draw the ring. I began to draw the circle. And the Lord showed me, he said, do you see that? And I drew a circle like this. If I had a chalkboard, I'd, I'd do it, but I don't have one. I drew a circle like this, and the Lord said, do you see that? And I said, I see that. And the Lord said, that's your life. And he said, your life goes in a cycle. All life revolves in a cycle. Praise the Lord. And I said, why is that? He said, because that's how I created it. So... Everything follows that pattern. So even in nature, the earth turns on what? An axis, right? The seasons follow a what? A cycle. Summer, winter, fall, spring. Our life has what? Seasons and cycles or really seasons that follow a cycle seasons that follow a cycle so the lord said your life goes in a cycle so when god gives you the word he gives you the word and whenever he gives you the word praise the lord it starts a cycle a new cycle that's why the word is important everybody in here right now today are receiving a new cycle every time you really receive the word you're receiving a new cycle praise the lord but the lord said michael it doesn't stop there he said because if you he said the cycle of your life isn't only meant to be seen two-dimensionally now he helped me understand this maybe because i'm an artist i can understand this but he said turn the circle so i turned the circle in my vision i turned the circle and i saw the sides of the circle and the Lord said many people's lives are like this he said but I designed you to um, cycle and elevate so your life isn't just appearing as a circle if you turn it and creating something he said your life resembles more like a ring or like a slink, like that slinky. So in other words, when you come around your cycle, you're not supposed to go back around the same cycle. Come on, somebody. You're supposed to elevate. So you come around, you elevate. You come around and you elevate. Come on, somebody. You come around and you elevate. You come around and you elevate. What are you creating? You're creating a cycle that's elevating. You're going through a cycle that's elevating. You're not supposed to be in a donut. Where you're cycling around and you're cycling around and you're going through the same stuff and you're going through the same stuff. There's no elevation. Come on, God desires for us to elevate. So the Lord showed me this in a vision. And he says, these are called prophetic cycles. These are called prophetic cycles. And he said, for you, that's something that travels a lot quicker. Okay, so you have the prophet, the pastor, evangelist, the teacher, and uh, what's the other one? The apostle. Prophet, apostle, you know these. Prophet, apostle, pastor, teacher, evangelist, apostle. So, everybody, somebody say, everybody has a cycle. Thank you, Lord. But not everybody cycles at the same speed. So that prophetic cycle, uh, often when you are a prophetic person, you're, you're a seer, you're that gift, your cycle travels a lot quicker. 
you know, God will show you uh, sometimes he'll, sh he'll, he'll take you to the end. You'll, you'll see the, the end of a thing or you'll, you'll see something that's coming to pass before you arrive there. So the Lord said he's endeavoring to create something with your life. He said, now take that ring, take that ring and now turn it on its side facing you. And I took the ring and what was I looking through? A tunnel. So we went from a circle to those rings to a tunnel. So every time you elevate, you're creating something that someone can go through. You see that? You're creating something someone can go through. He said, Michael, this is your life. Every time I give you the word, you're starting a new cycle. So he said, it's important that you come back around. You come back around. Praise the Lord. I'm going to help somebody today with your gift. So that's why sometimes it feels like things cut on and off. Because you're in different seasons. And if you understood that you're just in a cycle, you're going to come back around. But if you don't complete the cycle, then you're going to have to repeat some things. Come on, somebody. Come on. I don't know about you, and I don't want to repeat some of this stuff. I don't want to repeat some stuff. I don't want to have to go back to my first works. I want to complete the cycle, come back around. Hallelujah. So you have to repeat some things if you don't make it all the way around like you're supposed to. Yeah. And if you are not attentive in your cycle, you'll miss some things along the way. And there's different things on different levels. Somebody once came to me and said, Pastor Michael, I can't hear the voice of God. I mean, he was speaking to me so clear for a while, but I can't hear his voice. And the Lord said to me, I'm speaking. And I said, and I'm praying for them and I'm having a conversation with the Lord. And the Lord's saying to me, I'm speaking. And I'm asking the Lord. I said, well, she says she can't hear you. And he says, I'm speaking. He says, but yeah, she can't hear me. I said, well, why can't she hear you? He says, because I'm speaking on a different level. She's listening in the same place she was last time. If she wants to hear me where I am now, she's going to have to come up. Hallelujah. So God is trying to always call us up higher. And with your gift, he's trying to call you up higher. There's a greater place for you to operate in. There's a greater place for you to move in. You've got to be able to go through that cycle. And how many know one of the keys to the anointing is focus? So first, knowing who you are. We talked about the voice of truth that reveals who you are in Christ. And uh, once you understand who you are in Christ, now you have to learn how to focus on what God has given you. And that focus will allow you to develop and become effective. Come on and become skilled. And um, we don't it's not like growing outward. Really, it's more so growing inward. Because there's greater details. Of everything that's deeper and deeper and deeper in your gift. We often tend to try to look outward for what we want in our gift. But really it's inward. And that seer can see and, uh, and be effective with their gift and know how to pray. Because really God will show you what to pray for. Who to pray for. How to pray. Elder Deborah was, was believing God for some breakthrough. Elder Lane just so happened to be in the spirit. And the intercessor. Come on. Elder Deborah said, I got this. She saw Elder Lane's face. I got to call Elder Lane. Elder Lane called her before she could dial the number. Come on. Somebody say effective. Skilled. To be skilled intercessors. To be a skilled prophet. Be a skilled seer. Be a skilled dreamer. You have dreams. Don't be satisfied just having dreams. Understand your dreams. God is building a place where we can do that. 
where we can be effective, where we can become like those sons and daughters of glory that the earth is yearning for. The woman she had the she she was writing the book about the sons and daughters of glory, didn't even know it. Writing a book about a company of people. Didn't even know she was seeing the body of Christ. You don't know what you have. You've got something powerful in you. And God is no respecter of persons. Come on, he's a respecter of faith. Praise the Lord. So, so the Bible says that there's no variableness, neither shadow of turning in God. How many know God is not a cycle? Come on. God doesn't have a cycle. The Bible says he has no variable or no shadow of turning. Now, we have cycles, but God doesn't have cycles. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord is about to take us somewhere. So, God wants to illuminate the path underneath your feet. And so, he's like the sun in the center of the galaxy that the orbit is turning on. Hallelujah. And the closer you get to that sun, the, the, the more habitable you are. That's why the earth is what? The closest, come on, the closest to the sun. How many know nature preaches, nature prophesies? The earth is the closest to the sun. It makes it more habitable. My question to you today is, are you habitable? Are you close enough to the sun to be habitable? Somebody say father of lights. He is the father of lights. He is the source of a light. He is the light. Somebody say closing the gap. So God is steadily bringing us in to him. He's bringing us into him. Watch this. I'm going to take it to another level. So the source of light is in you. So we're talking about shadows. In the Old Testament, there was something called types and shadows of Christ. The prophets prophesied from a place of seeing a shadow. Which is why when Jesus came and he said, he said, uh, he said the least of the kingdom on this side is greater than John the Baptist. Because the prophets on this side were only seeing a shadow. But on this side, we can see him for who he is in the now. There's an open heaven. There's a, there's a kairos that we can connect with. Where we're connected with that source of light. And the light, we're not looking at the light from afar. But the light can be in us. The Bible says that the prophet, when they prophesied, the spirit came upon them, came upon them and caused them to prophesy. Catch the revelation. The greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. All right. Nature preaches, nature prophesies. Now listen. The lesser light we call the what? The, the moon. And what does the moon do? The moon only reflects the light from the Father. Come on, the light from the source. The moon reflects the light from the source. So the prophets of the Old Testament, the Spirit of God came upon them. In other words, the light only came upon them but with us the light resides within come on so that's why the scripture we read in first peter says what the day star christ that rises in you in your heart in you not upon you but the day star that rises in you somebody say i carry the source Come on, he's the source of light. And he's in me. Somebody say, greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. God is steadily bringing us into him.
Hallelujah. I hear the Holy Spirit. And that revelation is in the room. You guys ready for it? Fresh manna. All right. So your cycle is only for time. It's only for this world. So that cycle you're going through is in time. It's for somebody. It's for a people. And on that cycle, hallelujah, your source is not outside of you. It's in you. So whenever you need light, it's there. Come on. The Bible says what? Thy light be a lamp. Thy word be a lamp unto what? My feet. Come on. You guys see it connecting? It's the Holy Spirit connecting the dots. Come on. That light be a lamp. The word is a lamp unto my feet. So the word is a key to accessing the source. So you have the word, you have the light, you have the word, you have the source on your path. Somebody say close in the gap. Close in the gap. Hallelujah. So God is bringing us closer to him. Hallelujah. We're destined to be one with him. We're destined to be full of light. So there's some shadows that God wants to deal with in us. And I want to encourage somebody today because the temptation that you've been facing, the dark areas that you've been facing, the things that you're needing understanding and answers in, those are all shadows. And God says, I'm closing the gap. Hallelujah. So you've got to watch for it. You've got to watch for it. Somebody's going to receive. Watch for the gap to close. Hallelujah. Somebody's been uh, feeling condemned because they don't feel like they're making progress because the problem is not solved. I have come to you today as a prophet to say to you that God is closing the gap. So you are making progress. God is closing the gap. It's not progress that you can see the way that you want to see it. But you're making progress. I'm going to help you understand. So sometimes when I'm doing the prophetic counseling, the person will say, well, you know, I, I don't feel like I'm making progress. And I say, well, why is that? Because the problem isn't solved. And I say, well, the, just because the problem isn't solved doesn't mean that you're making progress. I asked him, I said, I said, what does the gap look like? Hallelujah. They said, what do you mean? I said, well, the last time you struggled with that, you fell. How long did it take you to recover? They said, well, it took me about three months. I said, okay, well, you fell again. You recently fell. How long did it take you to recover? And they said, well... It took me two months. I said, well, praise the Lord. You're making progress. He's closing the gap. Somebody say he's closing the gap. God is not. He's not concerned about you falling. Oh, praise the Lord. He's concerned about you recovering. Come on. He's standing there and he's waiting for you to get back up. Somebody fell on what they were believing God for. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. Somebody fell on the promise. They fell off the promise. God's not looking at where you fell. He's not looking at how you fell. He's standing there waiting for you to get back up. He's saying, come on, give me your hand. Come on, I got you. You can make it. You can do this. Come on. You've got it. Give me your hand. You're going to make it through this. Come on. Somebody say close in the gap. He's closing the gap. So how do you measure progress? How long for recovery? Hallelujah. So the Lord said to me, he said, Michael, he said, when you return to the word, you've completed a cycle. Oh, come on. When you return to the word, you've completed a cycle. Because the word starts a new cycle. And come on, God has already He's already uh, designed for you to fall. 
in the cycle. Don't condemn yourself for Paul. It was a part of the design. Somebody said, well, why did I need to fall? It's exactly the way it sounds. Why did I need to fall? Because it's not just you that's going to get up, but it's him that's in you, the day star rising in you. It's him that's in you that's going to get up. So he needs you to fall so that he can rise in you. Somebody fell on some things and God is not here to condemn you. The world around you has condemned you. You fell off of some things. God is here to stand you back up. He's here to quicken your recovery. So there's those seasons where God will give me a word and I'll go through that cycle. And uh, that word is now tested. There's fire that comes and the doubt comes and the fear comes. Come on. Because when you get the word, it's amazing when you get the word. I mean, your faith is on high. You believe God. It may as well have already did it, what he said. You praising him. You lifting up your hands. You making a shout. Come on, you dancing. You got that word. And then you leave the church and you walk away from your prayer closet or you close the Bible on that day. And next thing you know, the first thing that comes is that test on the word that you received. Now, God is testing the word. And then there's that fall that you make. Now you find yourself doubting the very word that God gave you. But then God has a way. He has a way of bringing that thing back around. He has a way of reminding you. Come on. He has a way of trying to get you back on track. And the Lord said this to me. He said, Michael, as long as you return to the word. Somebody say, as long as you return to the word. The promise still stands. Because the word is the source. The word is the light. It's the lamp unto, the, unto, unto your path. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is the closing the gap on somebody today. Let's stand up. Let's just receive it. So, Kura da Ba, Sibredi Isikere. Sindo Gaide Vin. Vindo Kura da Ba. We thank you, Lord God, for closing the gap. We thank you, Lord, for closing the gap, Father. So, Kura da Sibredi Hey. You told me this month, Father, that you're closing the gaps, Father. Hallelujah. As the day star is rising, as Christ is rising in our hearts, let's just lift up our hands and receive from the Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for moving in our midst like that, Lord. Last week you spoke to us. You said that you're putting us in authority over our time. Praise the Lord. You said that just like Joshua told the sun to still, you're going to speak to some things in our situation that we can cause it to freeze. Those closed doors to open back up. Those things that were closing to remain where they were until we came through. You were creating grace. You were creating a space for us. Praise the Lord. You said to us last week that you were making room for us. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for it. And today you're closing the gap. You're closing the gap on the temptation. You're closing the gap on the promise. You're closing the gap on the struggle. Hallelujah. You're causing us to be able to recover. You're infusing strength into us in Jesus' name. Those who have fallen down, you're calling us to stand back up again. To receive the promise. To receive the blessing. I hear the Holy Spirit. He says it's not too late. He says it's not too late. Hallelujah. Somebody fell off of some things. Somebody let go of some things. If that's you, I want you to line up. I want to pray for you. Somebody let go of some things. You fell off of some things. If that's you on the live feed, put it in the comments and just receive. God is going to restore God is going to revitalize. He's going to replenish. Hallelujah. He's going to cause you to be able to recover. You fell down. And he's going to rise up in you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Lord taught me about cycles. He taught me about cycles and prophetic cycles. When I was 15 years old. He prophesied to me, he said, Michael, you're going to run this race. I was in the track team. You're going to run this race and you're going to win it. You're going to win the race. 
you're going to do a cycle. You're going to go around four times around the track. It's a mile. He said, but on the second lap, he said, I want you to run the first two laps. Burn yourself out. I asked him, I said, Lord, how am I going to get this miracle? Because it would have taken a miracle for me to win. I was 15. I was small, smallest guy on the track. And I was running against state champion runners. And that night, the Lord prophesied to me, I'm going to do a new thing in your life. And you're going to win this race. And it's going to be a sign. You're going to run a cycle. It's going to be a sign. You're going to run the first cycle of my word. I'm going to set you in a prophetic cycle on the track. It's going to be a sign that I've called you to preach the gospel. So I said, Lord, how am I going to do this? He said, run the first two laps full speed. Don't save any energy. Now, how many have been on track, ran track before? How many have run track? How many know that's like a death wish? You don't do that. You don't use all your energy on those first two laps. He said, burn yourself out. Now, this is God talking. So it's not like I could fake it. I couldn't fake, you know, conserving. I really had to burn myself out. He said, if you burn yourself out, he said, when you burn yourself out, he said, you'll be able to receive the miracle of victory for that cycle, for that race. So I went and I started running. And um, I had to die. That second lap came around and I'll never forget. I will never forget it. I came around that last lap. And um, I could feel everything in me breaking down. I had no idea how I was going to finish this race. And I'm running. <laughs> and uh, my legs start to slow down. And, and uh, I'm looking at the finish line. And it's almost as if I'm just going to finish the race right there. And so everybody's yelling at me. My coaches, my friends, slow down. What are you doing? Slow down. And they used to call me Watson. They called me Watson. Watson, slow down. Watson. Watson. And I'm running. And I mean, I'm telling you, I was on my last ounce of energy. And as I'm crossing the line, I start to black out. And I cross the line. And you, this is how you know I had no energy left. I did, uh, you know, at the end of the race where you lean over. I did one of those and I was about to face, but I was about to foul. I closed my eyes and I crossed the line. And the minute my foot stepped over the line, it wasn't a minute before. As soon as I crossed the line on my last ounce of energy, a gust of wind came in to the stadium. Now, I'm in front of everybody. They're all behind me. But they're all, you know, calling me a fool. A gust of wind came in the stadium. And God sent two angels. Came in to strengthen me. One on my left, one on my right that came in. And I felt the wind pick me up. And I remember opening my eyes. I looked down. I didn't know how my legs were still moving. I had no clue. And here I am, and I'm just like running. They know how my legs are moving. My friends, they told me, they said, Michael, when you crossed that line, they said, we don't know what happened. But I've never seen anybody run like that before. <laughs> Somebody say, God. <laughs> I knew it was God because I was dead. So the Lord said, you had to die, he said, so that I could come in and run through you. He said, and take this as a lesson on your cycle. That um, when you die to yourself like that, that's when I come in and strengthen you. That's when I come in and give you what you need for the victory. When you're willing to die to yourself and what you can do. So I ran and so I'm running and I, and, I, and, I, and I got this, you know, I'm running with the angels. And I'm running, I'm thinking, man, I got this. And I, that guy behind me, he started 
to creep up on me. He started to creep up on me. Now we just talked about cycles. And now what do we say God designs on every cycle? And God was teaching me the word. He was teaching me the word in the race. Every cycle. I don't care who you are. God designs a fall. He designs a fall. So those angels are running with me. And I'm thinking to myself, why are they letting him catch up with me? Because he's catching up with me. He gets up next to me. And he's running next to me. And then he starts to curse. He looks at me. He starts to curse. And I knew it was the devil. And he starts to curse at me. And he bends down. True story. Bends down. Turns to scoop me up on his back while we're running. And throws me in the air. And there I fly off the track onto the grass. And I hit the ground on the grass. Right about 10 meters before the finish line. He throws me on the grass. And he crosses the line. And I remember laying there on the grass. Looking up. And I had a fall. But I didn't just fall in the natural. I fell off my faith. I fell off my faith. And I looked up and I said, Lord. Why did you deceive me? You told me I would win. You told me it was a sign. Why did you let him cross the line? Now, mind you, the race isn't done yet. And the Lord says, hurry up and finish the race because the other runners were coming. And so I got up. I finished the race. I ran into the locker room and I remember punching the lockers. I punched the lockers. I made my knuckles bleed. I was so mad at God. And I start to curse God. And I told the Lord, I said, I would never believe you again. Because you promised to me. Somebody say, I fell. You promised me that I would win. You said it was a sign. And about a few minutes later, somebody came down the locker room and said, they want you on the field. I came up. And you guys know this. Some, some of you know the story. You read the book. And it turns out they disqualified the runner. Now, had I not gotten up and finished the race. Come on. Because I took a fall. But if I didn't get up and finish, I would have never saw the victory. Now, they disqualified the runner and they gave me the victory. And the Lord said this to me. He said, Michael, learn this lesson. About your cycle. He said. What you see. As the finish line. Is not. Where I stop. Actually it's where I begin. Because. You died. And then. Your faith. Fainted. When you saw him cross the line. But you didn't know. That even though the race was over, I was still running for you. He said, take this as a lesson. Never pay attention to what you see in the natural. Come on. Never look at what you see in the natural. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care what the natural is speaking to you. Never let the natural to you louder than what I'm saying. He said, Michael, if you want the key to victory... So I'm going to give you some keys today. And you're going to carry this throughout the life of your ministry. He says you will never lose a battle if you hold on to these keys. He says, I don't care how long it looks that way. He says, I don't care how bad it looks. He says, I don't care what nature is saying to you. I don't care what the situation is saying to you. I don't care what your body is saying to you. I don't care what your marriage is saying to you. Come on. If I called it, if I spoke to it, he said, it's going to be as I said that it is. And you'll never, ever lose a victory if you hold on to my word like that. If you trust me like that. If you're willing to go the distance. How many know that was the last time I ever cursed God like that? So he taught me the lesson about my cycle. And I returned to the word. And he said, now let me say again. I've called you. To preach the gospel.
Uh, how many know I really believed in them? I really believed in them. And so I read that book. But that's what God is doing. He's closing the gap on you. He's closing the gap on those things in your life. There are certain areas of your life that God is going to cause to become full of light. And as those things become full of light, that illumination is going to shed a light upon every other area of your life. And as you surrender your heart to him, he's going to close the gap on all the things that you're believing him for. Praise the Lord. He's going to close the gap on those struggles. He's going to close the gap on your financial breakthrough. Come on. He's going to close the gap on your healing. He's going to close the gap. Don't look at the situation. Look at the recovery. Watch your recovery. Watch your recovery and for that person who struggles with anger, who struggles with getting a hold of their soul, a hold of their emotions. God wants to close the gap on your recovery. That thing that sends you into a fire, that thing that makes you red hot, where you lose perception of things around you, you act and then you only see the result of your action. I see the Lord closing the gap. Come on. Pay attention to your recovery. There are some things at one point that used to take you six months to recover from. It's still happening, but now your recovery is one day. Come, somebody say closing the gap. It's only a matter of time before that's not going to be a problem anymore. Come on, you're making progress. Thank you, Lord. Let's just give him glory for it. Thank you, Father God. We receive it in Jesus' almighty name. And we seal this word today. We thank you, Lord, for these moves of God that you're releasing in our life. Breaking generational curses. You're making a room for us. And today, you're closing the gap. In Jesus' name, we pray. We give you the glory for it, Lord God. We bring you the testimony for the things that you're going to do this week. In Jesus' almighty name, we pray. Everybody say, amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Elder Lane, if you could close us out in prayer. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God.